everyone and welcome back to the channel. So as you can tell from the thumbnail, you ever realize how small you need to actually move to land your shot to handle recoil? We all know when you ADS, your sensitivity is also naturally slower unless you change the settings. But still, the movement required to maintain recoil control is still very minimal. Today we're going to cover this small movement and discuss how it can correlate to some aim training exercises, how to isolate it in game, but also the thought process to overall improve. This is one part of aim that requires a ton of time as it it's a fast motion, it changes the direction, and requires discipline that even I have yet to fully master. But we're going to see all the progress because everything I've done so far has been showcasing a lot of results. Real quick, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe for more content like this if you found this content in any way, shape, or form helpful. Now remember when we first started learning how to aim, how we thought flick shots were key, that larger movements were way more difficult. But in reality, as you get better and your aim improves, so you're going to find that the small adjustments are actually what is more difficult to actually physically land your shot. This is so important because even recoil, while it may look like it's a lot, once you add in the fact of shooting someone from a distance, you're going to see just how small the motion is. And I have some footage in the background showcasing my hand controlling the R301 and also R99 recoil. And even then, you can barely see my hand move. Well, the solution, some will naturally say, just lower your sensitivity and keep those movements large again. Well, the issue is in most fast-paced games, you lose all mobility. And doing a 180, you're going to lose a lot of speed. You're going to lose a lot of momentum. So sometimes you don't want to sacrifice that speed. You see, in games like CSGO, you can predict an enemy where they're going to be. And you're less worried about somebody jumping you from an off angle or maybe surprising you vertically. This is something I've been practicing and it's been honestly discovering just how quite difficult it is still after years of practice. I've been grinding two scenarios on the Voltaic end and I've hit masters on them so far as you can see on screen, but still have a long way to go in my opinion, even after hitting masters. These two scenarios are Air Angelic 4 Voltaic and Fugla X, Y, and Z Voltaic. So the very interesting thing about these two scenarios is how much they spike left and right and the overall spatial space covering vertical and horizontal aim, which when I zoom into apex, the recoil, and we have a target moving side to side, we'll see just how overall the movement mirrors in this case. In most cases, even on the aim trainer, the movement is still faster, more sporadic, but if you can get used to that movement, then you can definitely aim and control the recoil in game. Now, when managing such micro movement recoil, realize the best way to learn it is by constantly getting used to the consistent patterns. So obviously you need to hop in game, but then getting comfortable with incorporating the movement. What is interesting is how fast targets will shift around and how little the movement is and how smooth and calm you need to keep your aim. So the question is, how do you improve this? One, keeping your muscles calm is really key from what I've discovered. The reality is that if you're too tense, you can't keep a constant flow of movement going from one direction to another. If you're too tense, you tend to stop or hard stop. This is hard to maintain in game, of course, when you're under pressure, as that's when you usually tense up the most. By keeping your muscles nimble and ready, you're going to maintain a faster speed, especially when target switching. When you're trying to be fast, don't aim to be fast, but relaxed and hyper-focused. Now, number two, practicing the motion end game, but also in an aim trainer. You need to get used to this motion end game as it's the ultimate goal of getting used to, let's say, the consistent recoil pattern and how it's going to handle. No aim trainer is going to give you that specific recoil control or difference. So you got to hop in game and just practice it. Number three, changing your sensitivity while practicing it. Let's say you increase it by two times the amount or slow it down by half to work on the various muscles of your arm and hand. Because keep in mind, you have to get the motion to get there and then you have to get used to the small movement. So that's why you're either going to speed it up or slow it down. You can change the surface and what you're aiming on that can also help you out. So overall, you're going to essentially to encompass all the other changes, change up variables as you practice. The movement can be very overwhelming at the start. This is one also you don't need to sink hours into, but simply going for it just a little bit during the day is going to help because you can't just simply grind this one out. You kind of have to tear down some of your old habits and you're going to have to get used to the refining those small movements and muscles, which can be really hard because they're really finite and they're really more in the fingers. Depending on your grip style, the one you saw today is obviously a fingertip grip. The issue I always have is I'm usually overshooting or you'll see my hand spike too quickly to the left or to the right when the recoil pattern used to be a lot slower. But overall, I've been seeing a lot of mass improvements and I'm sharing my journey, my progress with you guys. Hopefully this will help you out. Again, the biggest thing is that we always thought flicking was more important to improving your aim. But in reality, getting used to micro shots and hitting small targets is more important. On Wednesday, I'm going to put together a full comprehensive 
guide on Kovax based on a comment that I received on how to refine hitting small targets and how beneficial it can be. So aim for that precision. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.